Greetings and salutations, my name is Deltran doing builds for Emilio, Rose of the War. You and I are going to go over her matchups, how to make her a bit better through SI, but first, let's get her digits. So we're looking for 42, 35 for offensive, and 32 for defensive stats, and ooh, there's a bit to look at here. That defense is 35. Now she's an armor unit, so of course it should be high, and if you look at that, you're probably thinking that's a little bit low for an armor unit. However, 35 is still very doable, and if you look south and notice that her resistance isn't a dumpster fire, and then north to see that her offensive stats are only one away from what we like to look at, <laughs> oh boy. She really is coming up smelling like roses. 47 hit points is also a little low for an armor unit, but it's high for pretty much everybody else. So we have a very, very usable unit here. If you take a look at that BST, it's 173, currently the highest in the game. This is due to not only her being an armor unit, which gets a buff because of the slow movement they have, but she's also a villager or a trainee, depending on what word you use. And that way, she also gets another boost at the end at level 40, not at the beginning. Her stats aren't that great at the beginning. But regardless, by the time that she's done leveling, she's going to have a wonderful stat line. And you can see there's not a dud here. The resistance, like I said, is low, but I think that's just sort of par for the course anymore. So let's check out how she co uh, compares to her contemporaries. So this is a little bit interesting because there's only three green armor units, so I did include infantry here just to give some extra comparison to let you know where things really sit. Uh, Hector and Butler are at the top for hit points, Hector actually having the most. And for the most part, uh, Amelia's is actually fairly high. It's not dead middle, but it's not high enough to just want to bump her up there. Of course, Raven being the lowest hit points. Uh, Attack-wise, we also see Hector and Bartra, but Amelia is pretty much right up there. She's only a couple points behind, so she deserves being up there. And everybody's uh, favorite uh, cash-grabbing commander is at the very bottom as far as attack because she's at the very top because of speed. And Amelia is right on her heels. So, in heavy armor, that is very impressive. I think it's because there are no huge heels in that armor. I think that's what's going on here. So I think I'm pretty much going to demand that all of my armor units get rid of their heels on their boots. That's that's going to be my course of action as summoner. I don't know about you. And then, of course, at the very, very bottom, we have Hector as far as armor units. And poor old Hawkeye is never going to leave that spot as far as speed. Defense-wise, I left it straight armor units because they basically run the gambit here. But there's not a huge spread. Two points higher is Hector, one point higher is Sheena, and at the very bottom is Amelia. Resistance-wise, Sheena is at the top with Hawkeye. Okay, good, there's some redeeming value to him. And Amelia is pretty much uh, actually about average here, and then Bartra is at the very bottom. Uh, maybe it's because of his tactical lessons he gives, I don't know. Let's see what this lolly pops us with. Slaying Axe Plus, woohoo, might 14, and it reduces your cooldown by one. This is the soft patch to killing uh, weapons, and it suits her well, it's nice. Sacred Cow, however, is her what her special is, cooldown to two, reducing the attack damage that you receive from ranged units by 30%. For archers, that means that she's taking almost no damage, for that hit anyway. And for mages, at least it means she could live here and there. Her A slot skill is Earth Boost 3. If she has 3 more hit points than the enemy, she gets 6 more defense, which is wonderful. That's a nice boost that puts her up to 41. That makes her very formidable in that realm. And Armor March 3, first unit to have this, making her buddies move a lot faster. I guess it's because, once again, they're just like, here. Where are these boots? But only for this turn. I want them back after this turn. They're expensive. They cost a lot of money. I can't just go get more because I'm in this world, not where I used to be. But you could use them for this turn. This skill does have a lot of great applications. It allows armored units, and it only works on armored units. It can only go to armored units, but it allows armored units to ignore difficult terrain because they already do anyway technically they could always move one space regardless but 
that rule the rule of ignoring train carries over to this so if you're in the middle of the woods they can still move too they can move into a forest spot and then move right back out or move through two forest spots or move through none you don't have to move through the woods i'm just being clear <laughs> uh it's it does offer that nice benefit and there are several maps where that comes into play big time Let's take a look at the obituaries, 37 to 124 on the draws, uh, 13, 5, and 145 whenever she's defending. There are a lot of faces here that I am happy to see. There's Azura, there's Delphia, there's Naui, uh, Reinhardt, Robin, Julia. <laughs> when it comes down to it, and Lind, hey Lind, how you doing? Dead. That's how you're doing. Dead. This is a wonderful list. It's filled with a lot of upper tier units and it's filled with a lot of units that cause you grief uh, and there I have some uh, this isn't all of them uh, if you count there's not 37 here but this is just a, a selection and honestly I have a lot of the higher uh, hip uh, higher defense ones higher hit point ones here she does really pack a punch which is fantastic on the flip side, whenever we're defending, we lose against five. Uh, on the attack, we lose against Hana and Tobin. And it's not a surprise that we see a third Armor Slayer user down on that bottom row, along with two mages. This is pretty much all that kills us whenever they initiate on us, at least vanilla. That's not bad. Though <laughs> that's It's easy to remember to stay away from them, especially if you're in an Armor Emblem team. I mean, someone's going to have to go up there and take care of those armor slayers but regardless you can handle this it's absolutely fine and it's at this point I want to talk real quick about how to actually play as Amelia she has sacred cow as her special she has armor march as her C slot I think it's a little bit obvious that you do want to put her into an armor team so that they can actually benefit from moving forward. Remember, it only works for one turn. You have to be adjacent to her, not two spaces away, not anything like that. Adjacent to Amelia in order for Armor March to work again. You want to have your armored units walking along the battlefield as a core, which is not anything new. They don't really go too far. But you could also use this as a neat way to use reposition on somebody to fling them across the field and then have them run through the woods and put them into a very specific spot. Maybe you do that with a Hector or someone with Distant Counter. But otherwise, Amelia could take a big hit. And with Sacred Cow, as long as you charge it up from melee attacks first, she could also take a hit from mages once or twice, as long as they're not red. I would not recommend doing that. But otherwise, any other color, go for it. You could go ahead and tank a hit, especially with Sacred Cow charged up. And so really, it's, a, it's as simple as that. Support your allies and act like an armor unit. As far as some budget skills to inherit, she is missing an assist skill, so that's reposition time. Or swap. Swap works rather well on armor units. A little less so in this case since it can actually move two if you have them all grouped together. If you're running Amelia without her core of armor, maybe you could go ahead and go swap. It works out rather well. Just remember swap is a bit more defensive, whereas reposition can be more aggressive or just more drastic and you can redeploy basically with reposition. As far as that B slot skill, Lance Breaker 2, surprise, surprise, fills up most of the uh, lacking uh, kills you have in blue. Green Tone Breaker is nice because there are high speed mages like Ninu that you're not killing, and you need to be able to ha uh, have something like Green Tone Breaker because, let's face it, even though she wasn't on our obituaries as someone who kills us, she's a Blade Tone. She's going to be buffed. She's not coming at you, Vanilla, so you need to be able to take care of her as a threat, and Green Tone Breaker is going to do that. She's very popular in Arena, not the most popular, but very popular enough to worry about. Desperation 3, if you have a plus speed Amelia, this is why it's here. If you have a plus speed Amelia, she's a good Desperation user. If you do not have a plus speed Amelia, she goes into an okay enough realm. And for a unit like Amelia, that's not worth worrying about. So if you have plus speed, you could consider Desperation, it's going to work. If you don't have plus speed, eh, you should move on. 
Having said moving on, let's talk about a couple of other build options. You could also swap out her Sacred Cow for Bonfire or Ignis if you want to have a raging good time. The Darting Blow 3 that I have here is a substitute A slot skill. Boost skills in general suffer whenever it comes to the uh, higher end content. If you're in most normal areas, you're okay. However, an elite version of all the heroes that we know and love will have anywhere between 40 and 60% more hit points than they normally do. That sort of renders this useless in pretty much every case that matters. So I like to throw away boost skills just because it's not worth working around later on. And in this case, Darting Blow 3 really, really, really comes in and helps out her kills. You could go ahead and co combine this with uh, Darting... Uh, you can go ahead and combine this with Desperation if you want, and using that, she actually is a pretty good one. She's not a great Desperation user once again, so if you're looking at something else for the B slot, just keep on going on. Let's talk about full builds, and I really only have two, and the first one I don't even have stats listed for you because pretty much it's what everybody's looking at wondering if she is good at. So, if you have a spare Hector, and your Amelia is plus attack, you could give Amelia distant counter and you could give Amelia quick repost and she is going to perform better than Hector. If you do not have plus attack, she's not going to perform better than Hector. And that's just the way it is. So it's a very, very, very specific build. You have to have a very, very, very rare unit into a unit that after the summoning focus is gone is also going to be just as rare as Hector. I love coming up with broken builds. I love seeing the most powerful unit, but when it comes down to it, you're sacrificing a lot for a distant counter Amelia, especially whenever you look at that you gave up a Hector that could have had good boons. Maybe you don't. Hey, that's that's totally your choice to be able to do this, but to me, Hector with that open B slot can use Wings of Mercy, which he's amazing with. You can give him Vantage, which he's amazing with. You can't do that with a Distant Counter Amelia. She does have a better uh, obituary page whenever she has plus attack compared to Hector. It's, in my opinion, it is not worth it. Now, if you really do have two or three Hector sitting around, yeah, go ahead. Give it to Amelia because, like I said, if she's plus attack, she has a very similar stat line, and she's going to be just as much of a pain in butt initially to enemies in PvP arena. Outside of that, I I think this is overblown. I think people looked at some of the numbers and they're just like, oh yeah, well that's obviously the best. It's uh, I it's a good option. It's definitely not the best. I would like to propose this one here real quick. This is a bit different. Really she's flexible enough that you can put anything on her and a lot of those options are budget, but this particular build, 106, 453, giving her a Brave X Plus, lets her use Wings of Mercy very well. She'll be able to come in and take care of threats that are in front of her. Ignis is actually very important. You will get less kills if you use Bonfire. She could trigger Ignis by swinging two times, being hit, and then swinging two times again whenever she doubles. This is important, so don't think that I have this here just because I like to have large hits. It is giving you a few more kills, and one of them is actually rather important. Reposition, as always, that's here, and Swiss Sparrow is on this particular build because I hate to see those wonderful defenses ruined with life and death. So that's here, and then I left Armor March 3 here. You could go ahead and change that out if you really want to that's uh, up to you it won't matter that much it doesn't assist the kills in the build it just assists her getting somewhere uh sometime before dinner so this is probably uh the build that i'm gonna go with and it actually works out rather well uh for most situations and hey do me a favor if you're on mobile rotate your phone into portrait mode if you're on desktop hit escape to leave full screen mode and hit that like button if i give you something to chew on if you missed any of the latest fire emblem information tap or click on the links on the left and if you like your info hot and fresh like grandma's cookies hit that subscribe button my name is deltran thank you guys so much i greatly appreciate all of you and until next time take it easy